GM's all-electric Silverado unveiling was supposed to be the biggest electric car news going into CES, and even though it might have outshined Ford F-150 Lightning, plus had a surprise unveiling of its little EV sister, other smaller EV brands that actually showed up to CES stole the limelight in many different and exciting ways. I'll tell you everything I saw right here in Vegas, and the Forbes contributor Tom Malogny will be here to help us make sense of the 2022 CES, and we're gonna start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. First, let me apologize for canceling the Thursday live stream from CES. I literally lost my voice. I mean, like, would open my mouth and nothing would come out. Kind of like the EV production line at General Motors. As you can probably hear, it's not really back yet, and if you're watching me for the first time, I don't normally sound this sexy, so enjoy. Now, let's talk about the CES this year. As you probably have heard, a lot of companies have pulled out, but many have stayed, and we had a great CES. The biggest splash in an electric car space was supposed to be by GM's electric Silverado unveiling. They chose not to come, but still had the unveiling virtually, and of course, the biggest question was, would it be better than ever popular Ford F-150 Lightning? Now, with trucks, it's actually really hard to say which one is better than the other because different people use them in so many different ways, but I can tell you that the Silverado EV is definitely better in terms of EV specs. First, Silverado EV looks different from the current Silverado, which is what I would expect an automaker to do when trying to step into the future. The F-150 Lightning is pretty much identical to its current gas version, mainly because it's not built from the ground up as an electric vehicle where the Silverado EV is. Secondly, I have criticized the Lightning for too short of a range with the longer range version being only at 300 miles. It quickly disappears and drops under 200 if you actually go off-road, have a payload, or haul a trailer. You know, when you do things that you're supposed to do with a pickup truck. The Silverado EV's range is 400 miles, which is not perfect perfect, but much better. And the entry model will start under $40,000, just like the Lightning, though at this point GM does no longer have the $7,500 federal tax credit, while Ford still does. Silverado EV absolutely destroys the Lightning in one of the most important categories of an electric vehicle, which is charging. It can charge at the maximum rate of 350 kilowatts, where the Lightning only goes to 150. And I think that's like less than half of that. Somebody check my math. Some other notable specs, 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds, bidirectional power, it will have the super cruise, which hopefully will be improved from trying to kill people like innocent YouTubers trying to test drive it. Also, four-wheel steering and its bed can expand from 5 foot 11 inches to just over 9 feet. First edition at a price tag of over $100,000 was sold out in just 12 minutes. But here's the bad part. GM is not going to make the Silverado EV until about a year after Ford will start making the Lightning which is the spring. By the way, GM has delivered 26 electric vehicles last quarter. Yes, 26. I probably could have made more electric vehicles in my garage using the gingerbread and the gift wrapping paper. 26 consisted of 25 bolts and one Hummer EV, while Ford has been kicking butt selling the Mustang Mach E's all year long. Ford has also announced that it will double the originally planned production numbers of the Lightning by next year. And since we're talking about deliveries, in contrast to both, Tesla has delivered over 300,000 electric cars last quarter. So we're clear where everybody should be aiming. But after the Silverado EV unveiling, Mary Barra wasn't done. There was actually a big surprise to be unveiled. I'll tell you all about it in just one second, but before that, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by our new sponsor, EV Charge for You. Do you live in an apartment or a condo complex in the San Francisco Bay Area and have trouble convincing the management or HOA to get your own EV charger installed? Well, with the load management box from EV Charge for You, you can now install uh, the charger of your choice 
all without worrying about additional or hidden fees to get charged. Find out how by using the link in the description of this video. So after unveiling the Silverado EV, Mary Barra kind of shocked everybody by announcing an all-electric Equinox crossover with a price tag of, get this, just $30,000. It will launch in fall of 2023. So let's bring in the Forbes contributor, the host of State of Charge YouTube channel, but most importantly, a reservation holder for F-150 Lightning, Tom Malogny, so he can tell us what he thinks about this and other EV news that came out of this this year's CES. All right, Tom, I definitely missed you here in Las Vegas for this year's CES. Uh, not as much as I missed my voice, but close enough. Yeah, I, I miss uh, seeing you out there. It's always fun to hang out at these shows, but you know, it just wasn't in the cards for me this year. I was recovering from COVID and uh, just wasn't a good uh, scene for me to try to force it and get out there. Well, I am glad you are back to your health, Tom, but let's talk about the big one, the big unveiling for the electric cars. I'm talking about the Silverado EV. And do you think GM has done enough to outshine Ford's ever popular F-150 Lightning? So, you know, the specs are better. There's, there's no um, arguing that. But, you know, this is a vehicle that's going to come out much later than what the F-150 Lightning is. So, it should be better. There should be better specs if it's coming out so much later. Now, don't forget, the, their Pro version is coming out uh, in, in, I guess, mid-2023, uh, but customers won't be able to order regular uh, Silverado EVs, not the launch edition, until the summer of 2024. So it's nearly two years after the F-150 Lightning is going to be available. So yeah, it should have better specs. Fair enough. Now, they've also unveiled the $30,000 Equinox. And listen, I am all for affordable EVs, but they did deliver only 26 EVs last quarter. And don't you think before they move any further with affordable $30,000 EVs, they should get the production going for the ones that they already have? Uh, the Bolt EV, the Lyric, the Hummer EV, and now the Silverado. Don't you think they should get that under control before, you know, unveiling more cars? So I don't have a problem with them announcing their future plans. Look, they can walk and chew gum at the same time. Although <laughs> recently it seems like they can't do either. Uh, but yeah, I don't have an issue with that. I'm glad they announced it. We need vehicles like the uh, Equinox EV. I, I'm a, I owned an Equinox uh, years back in 2011, Equinox, me and my wife liked it a lot. I'd love an electric version of the Equinox. And if they can deliver with $30,000 before rebates, and if it has decent range, 250 to 300 miles, let's say, plus, uh, that's a winner. That's what moves the needle. Affordable EVs is what we need. And these small crossovers are perfect for families. So uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. Bring, bring us that as fast as possible, GM. And I think you'll have a winner. All right. Now, what do you think about the rest of the electric car news that came out of CES in Vegas? Anything particularly that caught your eye? And do you think the Silverado EV unveiling got outshined by some of them? Yeah, I don't really think it got outshined. There were some cool things. The, the Mercedes concept car that they, that they showed was really cool. There was some charging news. Wallbox introduced the new Quasar 2, which is a bi-directional DC charger for home use. I thought that was interesting. I wrote an article on that on Inside EVs, and I'm actually going to be getting one soon to review. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but the Sony deal was, was pretty interesting. You and I were at CES two years ago when Sony revealed their first car that they said they weren't going to build. It was just a technology showcase. And you and I both said in that interview, we're not buying it. We think down the road they're actually going to make this. And now they have the second concept. So, you know, I'm not buying that Sony's not getting in the EV game. I think we're going to see them launch a, a full electric vehicle brand, and they should. I like their vehicles, and I think they'll do okay. All right, now, despite the fact that Tom rarely puts on his sexy voice for his audience, I still think you should subscribe to his YouTube channel, so I took a liberty and linked to it in the description of this video. Before we get to our next story, let's check out this year's very first grumpy comment of the week, and this one comes from Betty Swalox, who asked, 
when is the hair transplant being finished? Now, Betty, I don't know why you're trying to hurt my feelings like this, but you know, I am Russian and we don't have any, so jokes are on you. Plus, my hair transplants just celebrated one year anniversary. It happened on January 6th of last year. And, you know, I can't remember what else might have happened that day. Definitely nothing was on TV that I had to watch for four hours while they were working on it. But let's move on. Let's get to other awesome EV stories that came out of this year's CES. And yes, there were some flashy and interesting ones like the Mercedes Vision EQXX, which I guess is what happens when a webcam girl username in a light year one solar EV have a baby. There was also the new all electric postal service delivery truck, which looks like someone accidentally stepped on a USPS package. And of course there was the color changing BMW, which will decrease the number of provable speeding tickets that you get, but will increase the number of hours it will take you to find it at the shopping mall's parking lot. But the real big news were made by a couple of completely new EV makers that you probably never heard of. The first one is TOG, a new automotive brand from Turkey, which has made its international public debut. You might have seen my report on their upcoming SUV and the factory it will be made in, as I visited Istanbul a couple of weeks ago. Now at CES, TOG has unveiled an electric concept EV named the Transition Concept Smart Device, which was designed by Pinion Farina. The concept car represents our capabilities from the technology side and uh, on the other side it also represents our strategy. We believe that the smart device is going to turn into a living space and here you find everything from technology side and from the user's perspective what you need in the living space. TOG plans to have five models based on the same platform powered by battery packs that they will make in partnership with Chinese firm Farasis, much like Tesla has with Panasonic and GM with LG Chem. The SUV is scheduled to go in production by the end of this year. Another brand that made a big splash at this year's CES was VinFast. If you remember, they had their global launch at the Los Angeles Auto Show a couple of months ago, but here at CES, not only they have rebranded the two EVs that are heading in production this year, but also added three more all-electric models after their first electric vehicle deliveries happened in Vietnam earlier this month, while the company has vouched to become fully electric by the end of this year. The two upcoming models, now named VF8 and VF9, had over 24,000 reservations within the first 48 hours. The VF8 will start at around $41,000 and the VF9 at around $56,000. VinFast has also announced some very interesting things like a 10-year, 125,000 mile warranty and there was a good reason for that. Here's what VinFast's new global CEO, Madame Tuile, told me right after the unveiling. We, we are aware that people, we nobody in this industry yet. People don't know about us, like you, like you said. So uh, we need to offer something that um, give customer confidence that we are committed to the quality of our products and we stand behind our, uh, our products. Also, WinFast will launch a battery leasing program, which I absolutely love. And when you reserve one of their EVs for $200, you will get $5,000 off of the VF9 model and $3,000 off of the VF8. Plus, you will get a VinFast NFT and, get this, a family vacation in Vietnam. And if all of that is not enough, for every car sold, VinFast will plant a tree. Our friends at too simple were at the CES as well showcasing their huge achievement of fully autonomous 80 mile trip with one of their semi trucks a couple of weeks ago and as you can see there was no human inside the truck at all. I have visited their facility in Tucson, Arizona a few weeks ago and was very much impressed with what they've done. A full video is coming up in the next few weeks. Here's what their CEO Ching Lu told me about what the advantages are of focusing on applying the self-driving technology to the trucking business by adding their technology to semi-truck fleets. While the technology is different, the use case makes a lot of sense, right? So one, there's a driver shortage. Driver labor costs are very high. Uh, two is it's fixed routes. You know, if you think about the U.S., five interstates cover like 90% of all the freight volume. 
So if you can automate this one particular highway, you have a very big business. And so I think from that perspective and from the value proposition standpoint, uh, will be first to commercialize, and that those are advantages. And of course, there were a couple of unveilings during this year's CES at which I kind of had to roll my eyes at. One of them was Sony's unveiling of the SUV version of the EV that they have already unveiled two years ago at CES called Vision S. At that time, there was talk about Sony possibly getting into the EV game and making the car. Unfortunately, all they did with it for the last two years was to create an arts and crafts project to come up with an SUV version, which I think was done by simply taking a picture of the Vision S, the sedan, through a fishbowl. Another eye-rolling unveiling was done by Stellantis' Chrysler, which I forgot even existed. They have unveiled the airflow concept, and if it will ever make it to the market, it won't be until 2025. Stellantis also brought some other EV concepts and even some of the current EVs, but that only reminded me why I don't think this brand is going to last that much longer. All right, it's time for me to go back to drinking some hot tea with honey so I can get my voice back before my live stream on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific. I hope to see all of you guys there for our weekly subscriber hangout you can set a reminder on this channel's homepage. all right looking forward to all of your comments other than that see you guys next time and remember to stay charged